And so first we should have a little chat about is the mild win of us chase grade one over the three miles. Um, interesting little context in here. Six declared J Cree strongly represented with Kim Your winner, I know that we are thinking in 2023. Martin Pike winner Awoko. He was a bit disappointing in the turner as a child, I suppose, but he had his issues this year, so it wouldn't be a total surprise to see him bouncing back. Mark Walsh sticks with I know the way you're thinking. He was brilliant, I suppose, under Derek at Cheltenham, but um he, he chooses the Gavin Cromwell runner. I presume he probably had the choice. Um John Doe does have a bit of a relationship with Awoko though, so maybe not confirmed. Um Hartwood, another interesting runner for Henry and Rachel, and they're around six to one as well. He was a really good winner of uh handicap chase at Leperstown. Um, earlier in the year, but Mark, what's your thinking on this one? Like, I know the way you're thinking, one, a handicap in the side of a proper graded horse, and the handicappers responded accordingly, 158, mm-hmm. um, up 13 pounds. Imagine if you'd given him 146 over there, you know, and you're to be something to keep you over like that. So <laughs> he could have made it very different, but uh, yeah, I, I think the one thing when I know the way you're thinking, early on, he was ponderous at some of his fences, he got behind, mm-hmm. Derek did so, so well, not to pa- panic. I think if you had an inexperienced rider on him that day, it would have, it could have been a very different story. The one thing is, this horse is light on chasing experience. I wonder would that performance kind of put hairs in his chest and, you know, see a man up here. I think you'll need to. That's that's the risk you're taking. Because I think, as a, as a type, I prefer, I know the way you're thinking to the rest of the field, uh, but I'm just, that that little bit of inexperience, mm-hmm. you know, you see it, Chianti I don't personally fancy him here, but you see how much more professional he was in an ultimate in comparison to this guy. But I just feel the ceiling is is really really high with another way of thinking. If if there is one that's overpriced, Hartwood is probably too big a price. Um, like he's, you know, leper sound chase form maybe hasn't worked out to be immense. I'll be a person about the Galois kind of hard to gauge out when he came down. He was going to be second. Um, but you know the handicapper again, he's caught in between the two two eyes. But I I thought that he won like his novice form even in the beginners chases. Grange Fair West Grade One winner. He's second to second to Blood Destiny proper graded horse as well. You know his form does stack up. I think and. Um, think about time there were Corbett's Cross as well earlier in the year when he was kind of gearing up for the season. But um, look, at it. I, I think as far as the grade one, I was chasing going, this is the best of them. I'm going to side with I know the way you're thinking. But uh, if you spare a thought for you, Giovinco down the bottom, one four six in the ultimate, they passed it up to run the brown advisory, have a nap them forever. I went to be wins the grade one here. <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't be calling me after that. I'll be somewhere very low. Yeah, I, I actually kind of fancy Jane Finko for the ultimate myself. I actually thought he ran a really good race in the Brown Advisory. Ran a belter. Ran he a did. Belter, yeah. He did, and he's, he's the only one in here um, with that parade one experience over fences. So maybe that might stand him as well. Um, I, I, I don't know. I think he's a bit, a bit overpriced at 9 to 1. But like you said, I know the way you're thinking. Um, Bit of a shot in the dark from the handicapper, I suppose. Um, but uh, this is a horse who could have any amount of ability, I suppose. And um, Gavin Cromwell trading him. I think he's always thought a bit about this horse. And yeah, I think, look, he'll have to go through his jumping. Like you said, he have to be a little bit sharper. But in a smallish field, I think he probably should get away with it. And yeah, I, I think he's probably the most likely winner in here as well. So we went to the 255 then. Um, it's a grade one of his hurdle. Over the two miles, again, a really, really strong field. We've got second, third, and fifth from the Supreme in here, as well as Mayor's Novice winner, Golden Ace, at the highly touted Dysart Enos, as well, from the Fergal O'Brien team. It's great to see these fiddies in against the boys, but I think they've got a really stiff task ahead of them. Um, Like, Mystical Power, second, the Supreme, Choice of Mark Walsh, Mr. Giff, ran a big race there, too, and, of course, Firefox for Gordon Elliott. Um, really, really strong field in here, Mark. Um, do you think the Supreme form will be confirmed with Mystical Power? If Mystical Power was trained by someone else, I'd probably be keen to take him on. But it's <laughs> Willie Mullins and you know the way they're campaigning. They do have that mileage left in them come the end of the season. I think I'm just going to side with him. And, uh, like, you know, the Supreme this season, I think, uh, from correct saying time form, Dan Barber might have tweeted immediately after it was five seconds slower than any Supreme this century. Groundwide was very testing. And for a horse by Galileo, you know, Galileo, not notable exactly for top hurdlers maybe three or four of them above the kind of 140 mid 140s mark um you know i thought it was a fair effort beaten by a strong stayer as well one that had form over further um yeah and he provided it hasn't left a mark i think he's the best of them and i wouldn't have had that view necessarily going into Cheltenham, but you have to be open to revising your thinking and with jp at this meeting as i mentioned like in last season he had four grade one winners and he was second in 200 grade ones the year, the year before he had five grade one winners in a couple of seconds including the national like it just seems like this meeting means an awful lot to him uh and i think this horse you know, el fabiolo he rattled the crossbar in this race against john Bond a couple of years ago from a willie perspective ours turning up here albeit a slightly different prep but um look i i, I like him dice Ardenas, I, I i can get the case there but um just 
this is a this is a proper test for her now. Like you know, the mayor's novice. I think her presence was missed in the sense of that maybe tactically, Paul and Jack could have been you know man marking each other and. If there was a dice or Dinos, maybe the race would have been running a different nature. They could have had another threat, let's say, to be watching out for a golden ace. Maybe caught them unawares to a degree. And the fastest finish of the week or the fastest furlong of the week, I think, was the mayor's now was hurdle with, with the golden ace. And tell you the emphasis on speed that day. Um, but I, I just feel mystical power. He's he's the proven candidate. He's coming from the yard that you know can keep them going this time of year. Um, don't need to be coming a tip in a short time, but I think he's actually an okay price. Oh yeah, I, I'm with you there completely. I won't repeat everything you said, but I, I do think the track and Ainge might actually slight, slightly suit him better. Like you said, he was maybe outstayed. He kind of looked like the winner jumping the last in the Supreme, but so you see the strong stare and just kind of outbattled him a bit coming up the hill. But um, I think he should confirm that Supreme form. And yeah, I, I'm on the Willie Mullen spirit here as well. So nothing too original there for me either. But we'll go on to the 3.30 then, the Manning Jace. One of the feature races of the day, um, another cracking event. Pick Dory in here for Paul Nichols has been tagged at this race for quite some time. I think Paul's on the record saying this is his best chance of a winner over the three days, which is notable for a trainer who is really strongly tagged in this meeting. Another Nicky Henderson, Cheltenham non winner John Mon reappears here. Um, I suppose it would have a better idea of how they're going at this stage. And there's a couple of Irish challengers in there as well. Of course, Protector at Ride Air winner and Envoy Allen. Ryanair second as well, other ones note. But Mark, what's your take on this one? It's it's another race where the kind of Henderson impact is you're just kind of it's very hard to be bullish just yet. I think after after a couple of races I'm looking forward to being able to address it. But I think the way I kinda of break it down would be if John Bond runs, I think he'll win. I, I really like to see him at two and a half. I think he'll be up his street. You know, he loves his track. Um I, I, I think he's the best of these. Um I fancy him to run well and, and, and probably give El Fabiolo a big rattle in the champion chase. It didn't materialise like that, obviously, but um, I have a lot of time for him. I think this is what he wants. Um, but if if Hen- Henderson's horses aren't exactly firing, you you won't see me queuing up at the counter for him. Um, so look at I, I yeah, otherwise pick Dory. I don't need to be obvious, but like, but as you say, I, I just like the way he's been campaigned. Won this race last year. Comes in here fresh. Just I, 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 the case for him is as much that I think some of the others you can pick holes into a degree. Like Protector at he'd been disappointed at this meeting before, having run really well at Cheltenham. And just, you know, he's he, he, well, he was a proper tester I here, I thought, this year. And um, mm. as a race for those type of horses running in his style, and in by Allen, he looked like on the ground, the wheel spun a little bit in his finishing effort. Didn't really convince me entirely. I think he'd want better ground to be seen at his best. And Conflay is another one I disappointed here last year as well. So I just, I think when you can pick holes in a few of them, I, I, I just feel that John Bond, if he turned up a game, John Bond, he wins. And if he doesn't, if we still have the doubt over the Henderson farm, pick Dory, he's, he's waiting the wings and ready to collect. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we have a better idea when this race comes around. But I'm, I'm actually on the side of Pick Dory, to be honest. Um, I just think Paul Nichols is tagging this race. I, he maybe doesn't get the credit he deserves, Pick Dory, as a horse. Um, I just have this question mark about John Bond when things don't really go his way. And I think Pick Dory is going to make life pretty hard for John Bond over this two and a half miles. He'll go out and he'll, he'll jump boldly and he'll make all. And John Bond, I think he can get a little bit windy in his jumping. Um, if he's being pressed a small bit, and I think Dory might press him a little bit at, at this track, especially Harry Compton would be fairly brave in him. So I, I, I'll take a chance and pick Dory, um, kind of regardless of the Henderson form. I think um, he'll put it right up to John Bond, who's probably going to be favourite on the day. Um, but we'll go on to the next race there, the 405 Topham Chase race over the national fences. I think at the moment it's heavy, soft in places on the national course. So this will probably give us a better idea of how it's going to ride for the big one on the Saturday. 25 declared, 2 mile 5 test. Um, last year's winner, Bill Baxter, reopposes this year off just one crown fire. It was 20, was 20 to 1 to win this last year, but he's 4 to 1 market leader this time around. Mark, did you have fancy in the. Um, Talk with him, sorry. <laughs> no, my, brain, my, brain, my brain went wondering. <laughs> you're funny, you're funny. It's funny when you see the handicap of some of these, like Bill Baxter down to. You know, a pound above, and then you look at a shake him up, Harry, which I just think it's unimaginable in Ireland that a horse would win by seven and a half lengths. I think in an undergrad chase on New Year's Day at Cheltenham, he gets three pounds, and then he turned up here after winning the play in Cheltenham, beating an extremely well handicapped horse in Crebley, and he gets six pounds. So he's nine pound higher for winning two marquee handicap chases at Cheltenham. Uh, it's uh, it, it something, yeah. something else, but like this, that's the way it is. The system is, and it's it, it's across the board with British horses. But I do think that it, it is an attractive thing for those types 
Uh, one that's come down the way today at a very, very big price, because I can see the case for both of those I mentioned, Bill Baxter and Shaco Parry, with a, a big, big price. It's around 40 to 1. Good boy, Bobby. He's not getting any younger. He's 11, but I think I looked at this there last night. I think something the three of the last seven runnings have been double age winners, um, double figure age winners. And this guy, he's, he handles a cut in the ground. I think you want a prominent runner here. Looking back at how this race tends to unfold, he'll be handy. He will stay. He's back down to his last winning mark. I'm not certain he'd want it absolutely heavy, so you'd be looking for it to dry a little bit, but at 40 to 1, Sam Justin Davis won on Bill Baxter last year. He switches and he's back riding for his dad here on, on Good Boy Bobby. L- a little bit to find, but at the price, I just thought if you want those, it could show up and run well without being one of my more bullish shouts of the week. Nice one there, a big price. So, and I'd, I'd say the weather forecast, I think Thursday, they're saying it might dry from Thursday on, but the entry would dry quite, quick, quite quickly. So, I suppose keep an eye on it on the morning and see what the ground is really like for that one. I thought Amy Deji was actually an interesting one as well there for Amy Mullins and Danny Mullins, 20 to 1. I, I just thought he's really, really unexposed. I thought he was a really good winner in Goran last time. Um, Heavy ground won't be an issue at all. Um, he, he went through it in Goran really well that day. Can make the odd mistake jumping, but if he takes the fences, he's definitely one of the more unexposed ones in the field, despite being a nine-year-old and kind of in that category of you know, could be could be still on exposed off that handicap mark. So interesting to see how we heel take the defences. I, I might have a small bet on him at a big price each way as well. But um the last race we'll talk about then on the Friday is the second novice herd letting us with four forty. Yes, grade one event over three miles. We've got the second and the third, I think, from the Abbott Barton is coming up here again. Jukebox story, I suppose, was antagonizing, anti- antagonizingly reeled in by that stellar story for Gordon Elliott and Dancing City was third that day. Um, Mark, I suppose, look, for these for these novices having these kind of back-to-back ones over kind of a grueling three miles on soft ground, I think I would be avoiding the Cheltenham horses myself. Um, what's your thoughts on this one? Yeah, look, maybe it'll be the sword I, I go down at now over these few days, but I, I think especially with Cheltenham was run on such bad ground, um, I, I'd be taking a similar view and none of the last three winners of this race had run the bar, so you can go back mm. years and find other ones, but recently that seems to be the direction of travel with it. Like reading Tommy Ron, he might be a little bit different sort of in the sense that he didn't get into the full depth of the slog. He wasn't fighting out at the finish. He was pulled up before then, but it's very hard to run behind him after running like that. And I'm just wondering now how good that Lawler's form at Nace is when you think that Firefox and Crow Park weren't right afterwards in Atlantique. He disappointed um, in the uh, Bally Moor, whatever it's called. The Gallagher's changed his name so often. I <laughs> let this slip through my mind. But uh, yeah, and you know, Lecky Watson ran grand. But you know, I mean, just uh, I, I, I'd be just a little bit jury out in that. And I think if, at the prices, I'd nearly take a, a go at Crow Park each way. He missed Cheltenham. He stays all day. Copes with testing ground. Um, I could just see him being one that maybe ha- he hasn't got to go peak performance just yet. They were gearing for the bar that he didn't get there. They ended up winning it anyway with Stellar Story, the same connections. But um, listen, it's a little shot in the dark. Um, he's sort of art. I think his purchase price has hung over him to a degree because, you know, you have this perception that when you pay that money, you obviously want to be getting top grade one horse. It does not always work out. Um, but he is a smart horse. I think if you didn't have it hanging over him, to be less... Uh, Less uh, criticism at times, maybe of horses like this. John Bond, obviously a much higher class horse, but I think he's been <laughs> falling into the same category kind of time. Just thought he'd, he'd be at the at the price in Crow Park. He'd be bound to run well. Um, Dancing City, huge run as well in the bar. But it's that theory. I'm just going to try and lean away from it. And maybe maybe we're wrong, but we'll have a go. Yeah, I I feel like I'm agreeing with you a lot here, but I was with Crow Park as well. Um, maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's bad. I might be uh, jinxing on your wits, but no, I, I, like Crow, like <laughs> I like I like Crow Park for the uh, Park that um did make it there. I think Gordon was saying that he actually put put set our story on the boat after I think Crow Park had some issue and he, he couldn't go to Shetland for whatever reason. But um, like you kind of said, he was I suppose disappointed in a lot. I think he was lame after that day, but. Um, like I said, kind of big reputation coming from the point to point foot field. He, he was good in Conmel winning earlier on this year. He hand, handled that heavy ground. And I just think like this kind of grueling three mile text, it could be quite soft ground as well on the day. He, he'll probably stand up to that. And I, I probably like him coming up against horses who had a tough time at Sheldon, I might say. He, he'll see how he's raced fairly well, I'd say. So I'm, I'm with you there at the co-park at 8-1 for the second novice hurdle. <laughs>